Many American diplomats and politicians are scurrying for cover today after WikiLeaks editor Julian Assange pulled the curtain back on many of the United States' most sensitive negotiations with other nations, including North Korea, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia. Some top lawmakers are even calling for WikiLeaks founder Assange, who has been on this program before, to be prosecuted as a terrorist. But not our first guest. Scott Horton is the editor of Antiwar.com. He joins us now. Scott, welcome to Freedom Watch. So what, what did Thank WikiLeaks you. reveal over this Thanksgiving weekend, and why is the government crying foul? Well, they revealed... Uh hundreds of thousands are the beginning of leaks of hundreds of thousands of documents on uh, topics, uh, wide-ranging topics. Uh, overall, I think what emerges most is the arrogance of the American empire and the people who run it, whether it's the previous administration or this one. And the way they look down on everyone in the world, it's certainly not the kind of attitude you would expect from the foreign policy department of a humble commercial republic. It's a, a world empire that considers even our best allies to be sort of uh, less than us. All right, were you, and, uh, were you surprised when uh, Yemeni president is quoted as saying to General David Petraeus, uh, you say it's our bombs and we'll pretend it's ours? In other words, let's lie to the public about who's actually dropping bombs trying to kill these people in Yemen. Well, there's not much of a surprise there. That is how they operate. And I'll call your attention, Judge, to the fact that uh, one year ago, when Barack Obama gave his speech at West Point announcing the July 2011 phony date for the beginning of the end of the Afghan war, uh, he said, Yemen, Somalia, look out, you're next. And in fact, we'd been bombing Yemen and calling it the Saudis, calling it the Yemeni's own government bombing them, all throughout last November and December in the weeks leading up to the Christmas Day attack last year. And then everybody pretended that uh, Christmas Eve was the first day of history, and no one could explain why anyone in Yemen would want to bomb anything in America. But in fact, Amnesty International uh, showed the cluster bomb units and still duds laying on the ground waiting to kill mm. more innocent people as a house full of women and children was bombed last December All right, when in the, uh, a week and a half before the Christmas Day attack. When, when this type of information is exposed, d does the government admit it? Does the government change tactics? Is transparency good? Or does the public say, oh, well, what do you expect? It's the government. They're not going to tell us the truth. Stated differently, does any good come from exposing this type of behavior? Well, absolutely, the public has a right to know. Whether they'll act on the information in these uh, documents, I guess, remains to be seen uh, what kind of reaction there really will be. But um, I mean, there are some really outrageous things in these documents and things that really ought to get the American people upset. For example, the Israelis are shown to push continually to get the United States into a war with Iran. There's one State Department document from August of 2007 where Meir Dagan, the head of the Israeli Mossad, is telling Assistant Secretary of State Burns that even though the CIA's assessment of Iran's nuclear program and ours, that is Israel's, are right. different, that doesn't really matter. We have our deadline and we, if you don't go ahead and attack, we will. And so that's really blackmail right there because, of course, if the United States wanted to start a war with Iran, they could at least try to do it their way. But if Israel starts a war with Iran, America will be involved no matter what. We'll just, he's basically threatening to drag us in kicking and screaming. Right. And, of course, we have thousands of troops stationed in Iraq and Afghanistan. Understood. We have uh, the fleet in the Persian Gulf that are greatly at risk in any real war with Iran. We, we have less than a minute to go. I want your take on this. What do you say to people who, who say, like a lot of members of Congress in both parties, uh, this jeopardizes the lives of innocent Americans and people will die as a result of this revelation? Well, you know, that's what they said after the Afghan and Iraq war logs were leaked. And yet Secretary of, Gates, uh, Secretary of Defense Gates admitted in a letter to Senator uh, Levin, that no one has died. There's no evidence that there's any blood on WikiLeaks' hands. There's blood on the hands of the American Pentagon and the American State Department that are waging these wars around the world. And it's not the truth that hurts, Judge. It's the truth. Uh, it's what the truth is about. You know, the real story. That's what hurts them. They're not worried about blood. They're worried about pink slips. They're worried about being held responsible for the crimes that they commit in our names. Scott Horton, thanks for joining us. Thank you.